everyone, it's Karen Berniston. I am a dye designer, and we are here today to talk about our website, karenberniston.com, and the special that we have going for this week, which is free US shipping on orders over $25. You do need to put in the code free ship at checkout, and that special will be good through Christmas. Okay, so let me just show you some of our dyes and what they do. One of our most popular ones, our pop-ups, is our photo collage pop-up. So what this one will do, we'll be popping up a collage of eight photos. Sometimes you can fit more, but definitely eight. And that die set includes a lot of decorator pieces included. So it comes with the word smile and the little small binder clip and the push pin and the ticket. That all comes with it. But then we also add on, you know, a lot of sets where if you get the add-on sets, they just add more embellishments. So our memory charms is a good choice to go with the photo collage because then you have the little camera. So you can see that camera used here, the frame from the memory charms. Here's a card by one of our design team members, Fran, using pictures of Filbert. Here's one where I did one, a birthday card for my twins from the time they were three up until like 20. Okay, just all throughout the years, pictures of them together. Here's one I did a couple years ago using our design team photos. So, you know, it's a really, really fun dynamic card. Now you don't have to put photos in it, you can definitely use any of our embellishment dies or maybe some of your favorite stamps. This one is done using our love charms and you can see how well those charms fit in all those little photo frames. Here's one I did last year for Thanksgiving where on Thanksgiving day, I had everyone assemble a couple little turkeys in whatever colors they wanted. And then I added on some of the leaves and things from our autumn elements and just made a little keepsake from the day that showed pictures of us all and the turkeys that we made, okay? So photo collage pop-up, really, really popular one. Another popular die for us is our woven basket box card. So this isn't a traditional pop-up in a card, but it's a pop-up box style. So you would flatten it, mail it, then they would just display it on the table like a little paper bouquet. And it does come with three size flowers and vines. It's got the woven sides and the rope handles and the grass for the inside. That all just comes with the set. But then of course you can experiment with different flowers from other sets or maybe you're gonna fill it with something completely different than flowers. In this more masculine version, I did some evergreen trees and deer and some little camping charms for a birthday card. There is a video on our website that shows you how you can assemble it double wide. So you can see here that that's two baskets put together to make it double wide. There's a video instruction for that. Uh, I think Fran made this card using our Easter charms and our Easter feathered or spring animals inside. And then his, this one by Lois on our design team, she also did the double wide basket, but this time did it in a completely farm theme using our barn and all of our farm animals and farm edges. So woven basket box card. Okay, moving on, there is our coffee cup pop-up. So this one is a fun one. It does have decorator pieces that you can use on the fronts of the card as well. It pops up that sort of traditional to-go coffee cup, and it has clips on the back to hold a standard size gift card, which is optional, but it does hold a gift card if you want to use that as a way to give somebody a gift. What's nice about our die sets too is that you're always choosing your own card size, and you know, you're even choosing your card style. So here's one where you can see the coffee cup in the flat position when the card is closed, then open it and it pops up. And of course you can do that in whatever color scheme you want. You don't have to put a gift card in the clips. Here's one that Kelly Booth made where she's starting to add in some of our decorator dies. So in this case, she's used the coffee charms, which is a great little add-on because then you'll get the smaller version of the cup. But then also our mermaid tropical scene, some of our label dies. And you can see she's done a completely tropical version of a pop-up coffee cup card with the gift card included. Okay, now here's where it gets fun. So that's the coffee cup. You saw the woven basket box card. A fun thing that I like to do every month for my designer challenge video is figure out ways that you can combine mechanisms. Because as we like to say, you know, with our brand, you're investing in a timeless tool. So we want you just constantly to be able to come up with new ideas and stuff of ways to combine them. So even though these two dies came out in completely different releases, what I figured out is that I could use the woven basket to on the coffee cup mechanism 
and then you get a pop-up bouquet in a traditional card, but a little bit of a different look. So that's combining the mechanism of the coffee cup pop-up with the decorator pieces of the woven basket box card. One of my favorite, just generic, easy, all-around pop-up would be the frame pull pop-up. So what this one does, it has no theme. You just pull the tab and it pops open a little square card. There's an extra pop-up mechanism that's optional that you can have something kind of floating inside the card. And it has no theme. So in this case, I've decorated it Halloween using some of our Halloween charms, but you could do it for any season or any occasion. And what I like about it is that it can go on the front of a card. You don't have to use it on the inside of the card. You can choose something else for that decoration. This card is by Fran. So on our website, I show an adaptation of the frame pole by just adding a couple score lines and extending your pull tab, you can actually create a waterfall out of it. So that's a fun adaptation of the frame pole pop-up. Okay, and here's one where I did the frame pole adaptation as a waterfall on a slimline card and then decorated it with our new slim frames and our holly pattern plate. That's a postcard style card. Okay, let me show you how quick and easy it is to assemble one of our pop-up ball dies. So this one is actually the smaller one, the bitty ball pop-up. And what you do is you take your big die and you die cut it twice to make one ball. So I've done that here out of a medium weight, smooth cardstock is my favorite. Um, definitely probably 80 to 100 pounds if you're in the States or like 216 to 270 or so GSM if you're overseas. Um, and then we also have the decorator pieces that come included in the set. And so I've cut those out of a patterned paper, the hexagon and the trapezoids. Okay, and I've already done half. Okay, so here's what I did to, to get it to that point is I start by locating the score lines and I can see them really easily on the side that I've die cut into. So that's the side that I would want to fold. And I'm going to fold first these four wings. Two of the sides have the wings. They're the sides that have the um, little hole. Then they also have the wings and those are reinforcers. So they actually glue down in the back to make those sides even stronger so they can hold up that rubber band. And you can use any strong adhesive. I prefer glue, so I have my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive and my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website as well. Okay, so just holding that so that the glue will set up and I'm going to do that on all four of the wings. Okay, like this. Okay, so this is actually the inside of the ball and that side where you can see the score lines is the outside. And so now I'm going to start working the score lines that I see in this piece. And they should all be folded away from me like a mountain fold, top of the mountain. And I'm not looking to fold these back and forth and back and forth. I'm not using a bone folder, nothing like that. I just basically a finger fold on all of these fold lines at the ends of the trapezoids and then at the base. Okay, so I'm just going around and working all of those like mountain folds. You can see there's half of the ball. Okay, then I like to go ahead and add the decorator pieces now while it's flat, because it's easier than, you know, doing it after. And then what's nice about having the decorator pieces on before you've assembled it is that when you are checking the tension of your rubber band and making sure that you get a good spring, you've already accounted for the weight of the decorator paper anyway that you're putting on it. So you might still end up putting additional embellishments on this piece, but at least you'll already have the weight of the paper pieces, you know, factored in when you're sort of deciding on your rubber band. Okay, so just going around and adding those pieces. And you do get six of these trapezoid pieces in the set so that you can cut these pieces fast and you can stack up two layers underneath each die. So really you can get all 12 of the hexagon or the trapezoids that you need at one time, one time. And then on the hexagon, the one that fits the top and the bottom, you can do the same thing. You get one die, you can cut through two layers at once so that you have them both. Okay, and, and those are obviously sized to leave a little shadow all the way around so that you get that little two-tone effect. This is the die that you would use if you wanted to cut your photos to fit your ball. So if you wanted to, you know, 
put photos on some or all of the sides, you could do that. Okay, so now I have my decorator pieces on. So here's how, and I, you know, then I just did it twice. So what's gonna happen is that these two are going to glue together. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna locate one of the sides that has the hole and the slit, okay? And then we do the same thing on the other one. And what we wanna do is we wanna choose a side so that when we kiss connection, when we glue them together like this, both the hole and the cut line up. So see the hole and the cut. If I have this one turned around, the hole will line up, but not the cut. So just make sure when you're making that first choice that you choose the two that both the hole and the cut line up. So for this, we would put the adhesive on the top of the tab like this, and then we're going to essentially fold these in so that they kiss together and connect on the inside of the ball. And this is something that you wanna take your time with so that you make sure that you have nice straight corners, a straight line right across here. On the inside, you can check your corners here, make sure that everything lines up and I can still get through that cut into that hole to add my rubber band later. Okay, so once you have one done, then what I like to do is I like to go around and connect half of the sides around the ball until I get to the other kiss connection over here, okay? So when I do that, I need to make sure that I'm choosing the side that doesn't have the cut so that when I get around to the other side, that side is open for me to reach in and add the rubber band. So as I look at it, I look where the cut is and I go the other direction. So this direction that doesn't have the cut, I'm going to connect the next side, which would be these two. And these ones don't have full tabs, they have half tabs. So the way half tabs work is they get adhesive on them and I recommend a strong adhesive. They're not connecting to each other, they're connecting side by side to the other side of the ball, okay? And you can just do that like this from the outside by just looking at your corners and making sure that it's straight. And let's take a look in there. You see that uh, one tab is connected to one half and the other tab to the other half of the surprise ball. And then you, I'm just gonna carry on and do the exact same thing again. So I like, you know, that this die set is so easy to assemble, but with such dynamic results, you know, it's a very fun one and it's so generic, it really can become anything. So if you need inspiration for what to do with your surprise ball or bitty ball projects, then uh, I would head on over to our Facebook group, the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps and join that, you know, you'll have to answer a couple questions to get in and all that. And then uh, people from all over the world are sharing some really, really fun projects using these ball dies. Okay, and then all of our other dies as well. So now I have half of the tabs connected and I can still get in there where the cut is and add my rubber band. Okay, oh, and you know what I didn't do, which I should have done, but I can still do it, is I wanna add, a, if I want this to spin in the project, then I need to add a brad through the bottom. And at this point, there's no up or down, you can decide. There, There is a hole in it, but see, I've covered that with my hexagon. So I need to just go in there and pierce the hole back again so that I can just take a brad inside and open it up. And then now I have the ability to add that with a brad later and make it spin. Okay, for rubber band size, I go over this in the assembly videos for how to choose a rubber band. My favorites are the number 12 soft stretch rubber bands. I mean, they even have, you know, the name, all that, you know, is on the website if you go on karenberniston.com. Okay, so I'm just going to slide that rubber band through the slots and into the hole on the other side. And this is the time now to check and see that you like the tension of it, okay? So what should you, you should be looking for is, I like that this is kind of bringing those sides in a little bit, but they're not inverting. I like that this gap back here is not very much, okay? If I felt like it was too lethargic, like it wasn't popping up to my liking, what I would do is I would take this out and put a knot in it. Let's just do that for demonstration here. Okay, so I would just go around my fingers like I was tying off the end of a balloon and just put a knot in the center. Okay, and that'll just give it a little bit of extra tension in there and give you a little bit tighter spring. So 
It's hard for me to say exactly which rubber band you're gonna use every single time. It depends on the ball, it depends on the cardstock, it depends on the paper and the embellishments. I mean, it depends on a lot of things. So the best thing to do is just kind of learn what to look for. I'll just make sure that's right side up, which is, you know, something where right now I can check and it's got a really good spring back, but not so tight that it's pulling those sides and inverting them. Okay, and then I can just continue on and finish out the assembly. Okay, so glue here, and then those go side by side. We're back to half tabs again. Sorry, I'm kind of sloppy with my glue. You'd think after doing as many of these as I've done, I would hit it exactly right on how much glue to put on these tabs, but I always seem to overshoot a little bit. That's why I like dries clear glue, which is like my favorite thing. Okay. All right, and then when that sets up, I've now assembled my pop-up ball, and it is ready for a project, and then I would just undo these and put it through a hole in the card to attach this, you know. And of course, it can be decorated. However, I could stack another one on top. Okay, so let's look at the difference in size between the two ball dies. So the bitty ball pop-up and then the surprise ball pop-up, they, they go together exactly the same. They just have different decorator dies included. So the surprise ball is about 20% larger than the bitty ball. You can see that if I stack them on top like this. There's a pretty fair difference in size. So if you wanted to stack the two together to make an animal, then the body would be you know a larger size than the head. Um, you get these embellishments with the surprise ball, real generic hearts and stars and circles. So circles make great eyeballs if you're fashioning your surprise ball into animals. The bitty ball is more geared towards animal making. So the pieces that come included in that are like arms and ears and eyes, hearts, little bows, things like that to fashion animals. Now a great add-on die for the surprise ball or the bitty ball or both would be our flap and closure die set so that you can make, easily make, envelopes and card flaps to keep the ball closed when you know you're putting in a card so the surprise ball needs a five inch square to hold it and that flap enclosure is five inches wide so that's perfect for making like a petal fold like you see here or you can use it on a any size card really just to add a closure flap so this one's an a2 size card four and a quarter by five and a half and i've put that five inch flap centered on it to hold that closed. And then here is a dog made with just the pieces that come included in the bitty ball. So there's two of them stacked on top of each other. So in that case, the head and the body are the same size, but you can also make them where you combine the two sizes. So in this case, the top penguin has got the bitty ball on the top and the surprise ball. Then the bottom one is actually two surprise balls stacked on top of each other. So you really can, you know, have a lot of fun if you have both sizes. You can use our animal add-on sets even to make little flat animals. So we have three animal add-on sets available. Animal add-ons one will make the pig, the fox, and the cat, they are pointy-eared animals. Animal add-ons two will make the hippo, the elephant, and the giraffe. And then animal add-ons three will make the penguin, the reindeer, and the moose. A couple more examples of not using the ball dies for animals, but just as their own little pop-up spring embellishment. So in this case, it's the surprise ball and then just some of our animals and charms used for uh, your sweet card. And then the flap and closure used to keep it closed. Then here, slimline cards are really popular. So this one is a four by nine slimline with a belly band closure. And then it's got that little bitty ball inside and then decorated with some of our charms and our gnome set. So you really can enjoy these even if you're not planning on making them into big characters. I also have a lot of fun just fashioning different types of closures. So for this one it's elastic and beads that just go over the top of each other. And here's an example of using the surprise ball just as a billboard. So there's the surprise ball back there and that could be either size ball just used to pop up a big item. So basically just using the mechanism for its spring ability, so to speak. And here's another example of that. This time I did a snap closure. So I just actually sewed a little snap onto some ribbon. And then here's the bitty ball used again, just to spring things up. So it's actually being used to animate our mini pops pop up 
all the way around it, all those mini pops are attached to the ball and that's what's giving it the spring to pop up. And then we have our Christmas trees kind of attached to it. To see these dies and more, just head on over to our website, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.